Hey, welcome back to Endless Money Pits for part two of my favorite tool series. This is my second time filming part two because of technical difficulties. And until next time, just keep throwing money at it. And I'm not annoyed at all, so this should go really smoothly. In the first video, I told you about my top 10 favorite hand tools, plus one bonus tool. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you about my top 10 favorite electrical tools. And I just decided there's gonna be two bonuses at the end of this video, so it's really like a top 12. But don't worry, they're all really good. And in no particular order, the first tool on my list is a digital micrometer. Like the bonus tool in the first video, this is something that I became familiar with working in a CNC shop a long time ago. And a few years ago, I decided to get one of my own because it's a very precise and accurate way of measuring dimensions. This one measures out to one ten thousandth of an inch or one one hundredth of a millimeter. And it can also give you measurements in fractions of an inch. Number two on the list is an infrared thermometer. You can use this to check the temperature of something from about a foot away with pretty good accuracy. It can tell you the temperature of something in Fahrenheit or Celsius, and it has a backlight for taking temperatures in the dark. You can use this for finding hot or cold spots on an engine, verifying that your catalytic converter still works, checking the temperature of your brakes when you get done driving, and probably some other stuff too. Why is it not the like Because it's hot. 800. And 35 degrees. 800? Yeah. I even use it in the kitchen sometimes to see how hot my cast iron skillet is. The third item on this list is a simple multimeter or voltmeter. Same thing. And if you ever want to diagnose an electrical problem, you want to start with one of these. To be honest, all I really know how to do with this thing is to check the voltage of batteries, check the voltage across the circuit, and checking for continuity, which is basically checking to make sure that two pieces of metal are connected somewhere, but it has the capability to do a lot more. I'm just not very good with electrical stuff. Oh hey, and it has a backlight. Number four on the list is an OBD2 Bluetooth adapter. This bad boy plugs in right up under the dash. It connects to an app on your phone. And from there, you can scan any check engine codes and have a look into the live data that your car's putting out. This is another item that's more capable than I know what to do with it. But for me, it's the easiest way to diagnose a problem with the car and to reset the check engine codes after I fix it. I don't remember what I paid for it, but it wasn't expensive. And the app I use with it, it's called Torque, is free to download and use. This one was made by VPeak and I bought it about five years ago, but but today there's probably a lot more options out there. I'm not really sure. Number five on the list would be too difficult to bring out here and put on the table, but I assure you it is definitely one of my favorite tools. It's my California brand air compressor and it lives under the workbench over there, but I'll kick it on so you can see how loud it is while I talk over it. All right, it's airing up and I'm talking like normal. Not difficult to have a conversation in front of this thing. It doesn't scare the crap out of me when it kicks on. And it's essentially maintenance free since you don't have to oil it like other air compressors. The one negative thing about it is that it has a low flow rate. So it's not really powerful enough to run air tools, but that's not a big problem for me. And if it ever is, <laughs> but that's not a big problem for me, <laughs> it's done. <laughs> but that's not a problem for me. And if it ever became a problem for me, I would just buy the next size up air compressor from them, which is capable of running air tools. Number six on my list is a battery powered screwdriver, specifically one with a lithium battery. I used to work in a piano restoration shop where I spent most of the day taking apart pianos and then putting them back together. And this was the main tool for the job. It's slow, steady, easy to use, and it holds a charge all day long. I was so impressed with this thing that I asked my boss where he got it, and then I went out and bought my own. This is an older model that Black & Decker doesn't make anymore, and they do have a new model of it, but I haven't used it yet. I highly recommend this tool, and if you use it as much as I did at the piano shop, it'll change your life. Number seven on the list is something that I'm actually using right now to film. It's my drop light. This is a really great thing to keep hooked up in the garage all the time. Even if you're not climbing under cars every day, there's always gonna be a reason to have more light in the garage. Like for filming a video about your favorite tools. I know you didn't think we were gonna get through this whole video without talking about my Milwaukee stuff. So number eight is my impact driver. <laughs> Text. I bought this a couple years ago, kind of to replace the electric screwdriver, kind of to replace my battery power drill, and kind of to replace my impact wrench, but it wasn't really good for that. It does work as a really good electric screwdriver. I got this pack of bits and drivers for it. 
and there's an extension there. And I got a set of drill bits for it. I love how the bits just pop in and they stay there and they have a collar to pull on to release them. Nice and easy. And it even works with the drill bits. How great is that? So while it's been a really good replacement for the electric screwdriver, too good of a replacement, to be honest, and a really good replacement for my power drill, it just wasn't really made to be used as an impact wrench, putting sockets on it, taking off lug nuts, stuff like that. It has plenty of power, but it's not the tool for those jobs. which is why number nine on the list is a Milwaukee impact wrench. I was so happy when I could finally afford to buy this. I remember I was working on my friend's Corvette and it was a really tedious job with lots of wrenching. And I had just seen a comparison video about this thing from Project Farm and knew that I wanted it. So as soon as I finished working on that Corvette and I got paid, I got online and ordered one of these things. And a spare battery that's really big. And you can't have an impact wrench without an impact socket set. This thing has deep sockets and regular sockets from 12 millimeter to 27 millimeter and three eighths of an inch to one and one sixteenth inches. It was really expensive. It's also got some extensions, some swivel joints and a size adapter. I think it was around $285 for this set, which isn't cheap, but I'm so happy to have this. It makes every job easier. It saves me a lot of time and time is money, right? Number 10 on the list is my Milwaukee high-speed ratchet. No, it's not a Milwaukee commercial. I'm not sponsored. I genuinely love these tools. The high-speed ratchet is the perfect tool for removing and installing fasteners when you don't need 600 foot-pounds of torque. Milwaukee makes a few different versions of this, and I wanted the one with the smallest head so it would fit in the smallest areas, but this one turned out to also be one of the fastest and most powerful that they make. The only downside to this tool, in my opinion, is that it takes a different kind of battery than the other Milwaukee tools I have, but it uses the same battery charger, so we'll give them back half a point on that one. One thing I forgot to mention about the other Milwaukee tools is that they have different power settings. One, two, three, and drill. I'm not sure what drill means. And the batteries will tell you on them how much life is left. But with the high-speed ratchet, you get one speed. It does go both directions. And the tool itself is what tells you how much battery life is left. That looks like none. I think, we, oh, there's four. <laughs> we got a full battery. Whoa. Time for the bonus round. Our first bonus item today is the shower 12 volt battery charger. This can be set to charge calcium batteries, AGM batteries, and gel type batteries. And you can set it to charge at 12 amps for rapid charging, eight amps for silent charging, or one amp for maintenance charge. After I put a couple Odyssey batteries in my Jeep, I noticed that they weren't getting a full charge. So I wanted to get an external charger for them. And this was one of the only Odyssey approved chargers and I think it might've been the cheapest one also, which is probably why I bought it. It was still around a hundred bucks, but I think it was well worth it. I've used this many times with my Jeep, the motorcycles, my BMW, which also has an Odyssey battery in it now. And when we were moving from Oregon to Arkansas, I used this to charge the batteries on the semi-trailer, the power of the lift gate that goes up and down so we could load the truck. In my opinion, this is just a really impressive charger. It's so compact and versatile. It has alligator clamps so you can charge anything and it still works after everything I put it through. And today's second bonus item, the final item on the list, is my Streamlight Stylus Pro Pocket Flashlight. This thing is so small and powerful. Anytime I come out to the garage, I just throw it in my pocket. How often have you been looking in an engine bay or under a dash? You just needed a little bit of light and you try to use your phone, but it's not bright enough, it's not focused enough, it falls over, it sucks. This thing's awesome. And they come in a bunch of different colors. I got the blue one. That's all I got for you today, but I'm working on a whole bunch of projects right now. I'm working on like 10 or 12 videos all at once right now. So stay tuned for that. And if you're interested in the final video of this series where I talk about my 10 favorite non-tools, that video should be up one week from today. You can also become a member of this channel now by clicking the join button below this video on YouTube, which will give you access to perks like getting to watch my videos one week before anybody else, custom avatars for commenting on videos, and some other things I don't fully understand yet. But if you pay for it, you get it. All right, I gotta go. Biscuit's getting antsy. She wants to go outside. And with that, thank you for watching. And until next time, just keep throwing money at it.
What are you doing?